Hi, I'm Cheryl, and I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! I recently got my Detail Floral Thinlets as part of the Floral Phrases Bundle from Stampin' Up! You can buy the dies and the stamp set separately, but Stampin' Up! gives you a nice discount if you buy them as a bundle. And I'm all about saving a bit of money when I can. That's why I like to get the most out of what I have. So I got my new dies out and my paper stash and started thinking about the different ways I could use these. I came up with quite a few ideas. So let me get my cheaters on and we'll get started. I use these two dies, the edge die and the border die from the set. For my first technique, I used old olive cardstock, Versamark ink, clear embossing powder, and a heat gun. I ran the old olive cardstock through my die cutting machine using both of the dies. Now be sure to leave yourself a handle like I have on this piece so you have something to hold while heat embossing. I didn't do that and it was quite interesting trying to heat emboss this piece and your handle can be trimmed off afterwards. So place the die cut on scrap paper or silicone mat. Ink it up well with your Versamark ink pad. Coat it with your clear embossing powder and then heat with the embossing gun. Do not emboss the paper first and then run it through your die cut machine. I found that it makes a sticky mess in your die and you'll spend more time than anyone should have to to pick all the little sticky bits out. Just ask me how I know. This is a very nice technique because by embossing your die cut it gives you a color coordinated layer to use on your card. Now for the next technique, I use my die cuts as stencils. Let me get my things out here that I used. Put that away. So I cut my stencils. I cut some from cut from some from cardstock. Let me see if I get that in the video. And then I also cut some from acetate since I had my die cut machine out anyway. I figured I'd make myself a little more permanent stencil. You can cut them with or without the border depending on what the look you're going for is. Now in this sample here I used my die cut and sponge it with Melon Mambo ink. And when you're sponging, instead of the circular motion you normally would to blend, you'll want to use a straight up and down dabbing motion because there are a lot of little pieces in these dies, let me show you, that that can be picked up if you're if you're going circular with it. So straight up and down. In the second one here, my second sample. I used Melon Mambo and Tempting Turquoise. And I know it looks like I've got a third purple color in there, but it's not. It's just the where the spot where the two colors have blended together. You want to keep that in mind when you're choosing your colors because some just don't look good together and other are gorgeous like this one turned out. So next I used 
still kept my stencils out and I did a spray technique. For this I used my Stampin' Spritzer and I put about a half an inch of water in the bottom. You could use rubbing alcohol also and in this case I put three drops of Calypso Coral ink from my reinker in the bottle, shook it to mix it up a bit and on this sample I sprayed heavily and then blotted off the excess with a paper towel and on this one I did a light spray. I just love this Calypso Coral color, don't you? So moving on, the next technique is also sponging but in this case I wanted to get a stained glass effect. So I used my I used my sponge daubers instead of the Stampin' Sponge. So first you'll need to make yourself another stencil this time using only the border die. Cut it from cardstock or acetate. Either one is good. I use just use the cardstock in this one. So you'll also need a border cut die, a border die cut using both the border and the and the edge die. So I'll I'll use this this one that I embossed from the earlier technique. Traditionally you'd want to use basic black for a stained glass look but any dark color will be good. So and you'll also need some Tombow glue. So to position your edge cut stencil on your paper you put your put your die cut where you want your design to be then line up your stencil with your die cut take that away but keep it handy then tape it in place and do your sponging on this one I just sponged wherever I felt I'd like to put the color and it turned out to be okay Let me take the stencil away and put the die cut on here and you'll see you'll see it's nice but then I thought that maybe I'd like it better if I if I took more care to put it in certain spots so I redid it and indeed it, I did like it better so this one's done Nope, this one's not done. To finish this, turn your die cut over, put Tombow glue on the back, position it on the over your stamp or your sponged area, and just press it in place and then you're done. Now for this this next technique. Let me get some of these out of the way. We don't need those anymore. For this next technique, you'll need an embossing pad or some craft foam, your ink and, and a stamping sponge, and only the border die, which is which is this one. So Instead of cutting out the die, we'll use it to emboss this time. So I'm still using my good old cuddle bug. I've got one of the um, the big shot die cutting machines on my wish list, but I just haven't gotten it yet. I'm looking forward to getting that with the magnetic plate and the and the detail floral die um, plate too. But for now, I'm, I'm muddling along with my cuddle bug, and this is how I cut. I did the embossing for my cuddle bug. I used my A plate, a B plate, 
the embossing pad. And there are several people that make them. You can get them a lot of different places. Then the piece of paper and then the border cut die, the border die facing down and then your B plate and just run that through. You can see, even on this video, you can see what a beautiful deep embossed pattern I got on that. That is really nice, isn't it? So then I thought I'd step it up a notch and add color to the raised portions. So I used my rose red ink and I sponged over it and using a, using a circular motion. I put quite a bit of ink down on here and surprisingly, let me see if I can get this to show up in the video. You can see all those little dots. I was uh, kind of surprised to see them when they when they started showing up and then I realized it was all the little pokey holes in the die cut but I'm still pretty happy with this and it it um, makes me think of a bandana especially in this red color this would be so pretty I think on like an Americana card or um or maybe if you're going for a country look on your card. So for my next technique, I gotta keep moving because I have uh, uh, quite a few more here. For my next, so my next technique, you'll want to get out your craft foam again if, in case you haven't do it, or in case you didn't didn't have it out before, because now we're going to make stamps. Yes, stamps. And I have two different kinds to show you. Let's see. Let me peel this off. So I have the just the outline. And I also made one like this. This one's kind of tricky. I'll, I'll tell you how I did this in just a moment. To make this one fairly simple, you just take your craft foam and run it through your die cut machine. You want to put some Tombow glue on the back. Let it dry completely. And it becomes, it becomes sticky and repositionable. Um, something like a, a glue dot. So when I stamp this, I use elegant eggplant and look at that nice stamp I made. I'm very happy. Now for this stamp this is a lot more fiddly. Okay this time when you cut out your die cut you want to keep all your little bits and pieces in the die. Okay, I found that if you leave the die and the foam on your bottom cutting plate and just flip the whole thing over, let's pretend this is my die plate or my cutting plate for my machine. And I have my my die cut here. Flip the whole thing over like this. And then lift your die plate off. And that should keep most if not all of the pieces in your die. You take this off here. If not, if they don't, if some pop out, and a couple did for me, this just take some tweezers or a pin or your a pokey tool and uh, and just put them back in place. Okay. So you'll also need a piece of plastic of some sort. You could use um acetate or um, I recycled some plastic from packaging and use that on mine. Uh, you could also cut your cut another piece um, out of the fun foam and put that on the back here too. So you want to have your plastic or your or your foam cut fairly close to your to your 
size of your die cut. Put a very, very light coat of Tombow glue on the back and let it set up. Let the glue dry a little bit. So there's my, we'll pretend this is my thing and we'll, this is my, there. We'll do this properly. Okay, so I have my die cut. I have my pieces in my die cut. Everything's all nice and lined up. And let me grab this. And so you put a light coat of Tombow glue on your on your piece of plastic. Let it let it set up a bit. Place it down on your plastic and turn the whole thing over. The idea here is you want your foam adhered to your plastic, but you don't want your plastic your foam adhered to your your die cut because that would be a whole new mess to clean out of there. So I managed to do that and I stamped with my with a the Pacific Point ink. And look this, this is really, really nice. It's kind of almost uh, batik looking. So, you're probably thinking, that's a lot of things you can do with this die set. But I have one more to show you. Who's to say that you have to use the entire die cut? In this example, I've cut out the large rows, just fussy cut that large rows out. And now I have a piece that I can use by itself. Or if I were using the die cuts on the outside of my card, I have a little something I could put on the inside of the card, which is always nice to do. And there are quite a few, there's a couple other nice little pieces here. There's a flower right here and maybe with the leaf. So it'd be really pretty. So I hope you've enjoyed my video. This is the first one ever I've done, so I was a little nervous. So I'll post a, a complete list below of all the products I've used today, if I can figure it out. And if there's anything you would like to purchase, you can do that through either my Facebook page or my website. Because I'd love to be your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I hope I've inspired you today to take a different look at some of the dyes you may have already. So if you'd like to, if, if you, and if you enjoyed my video and you'd like to see more as I post them, just click the subscribe button below or if you have any questions or comments, leave those below also. So, take care, stay safe, and happy stamping.